Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praise is due to Allah alone. We praise him and we seek his help. Whomsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, none can show him guidance. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. My dear viewers everywhere, welcome to another live edition of Ask Koda. Allow me in the beginning to remind you with our phone numbers and the contact informations. Beginning with the area code 002, then 023855131. Alternatively, area code 002, then 01005469323. And we have WhatsApp numbers for calls, only no messages. Area code 001347806025. And finally, area code 001361489105. You can watch us live on my Facebook page, M. Salah Official, as well as the YouTube channel. Um, we already have some callers, so let's begin with Ahmed from Germany. Assalamu alaikum, Ahmed, and welcome to Ask Wada. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah, Sheikh. How are you? I'm doing great. Alhamdulillah. Are you fine? Yes, everything is great. So what do you have uh, in mind Shaykh, today? I have uh, uh, three questions. Mm -hmm. I have three questions that are connected to each other uh, and related to one issue. Sure. Uh, the question is, is that uh, if a person, if a group of Muslims is a uh, leader uh, fighting another group of Muslims, if he killed, is he considered as a uh, shaheed? Okay. Question number one. What and is the basis of is, the fight? What is the basis of the fight? The basis of the fight of both uh, uh, a both of the group is uh, Islam, and they they consider to be leaders of the Muslims okay. uh, groups in this. And one is killed, and they they call them they call him Shahid. Okay. And every year they celebrate the dead an anniversary of him. And what is the ruling of uh, taking or uh, keeping the picture of the dead in the Facebook or in the printing of the dead photo? I wanted to ask this question. Sure. Got your questions, Ahmed from Germany. Thank you so much. In Surah Al-Hujurat, the Almighty Allah says, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ قَتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا فَإِن دَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَبْغِي حَتَّى تَفِيءَ إِلَى أَمْرِ اللَّهِ فَإِن فَاءَتْ فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدْلِ وَأَقْسِطُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ So these verses of Surah Al-Hujurat do answer your questions. Irrespect of when two parties of the Muslims fight, then definitely uh, one of them is transgressing against the other. So it is the duty of the entire Ummah to make peace and to reconcile between the fighting parties. It is not befitting for the rest of the Ummah to sit back and watch or to support one against the other without realizing who is being unjust to the other. And in case that one of them is still transgressing and refuses all peace, trust, and cease fire, then the whole Ummah should put stop to that by fighting the transgressing party. They have become bugha until they come back to the decree of Allah. And if they do, then make peace between them, establish justice, and be equitable. Allah indeed loves the equitable ones. Surah al hujurat chapter number 49, ayah number 9. In the case of two Muslims fighting, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا الْتَقَى الْمُسْلِمَانِ بِسَيْفَيْهِمَا فَالْقَاتِلُ وَالْمَقْتُولُ 
في النار ونبر تو مسلمز ريز ارمز اجينست ايتش اذر اند دي فايت بوث اوف هم دي مردرر اند دي مردرد ون ويل بي ان هيل فاير سو دي كامبانيون سيد او بروفيت اوف الله وي نو ذات ذا مردرر ديزيرفز تو بي ان هيل فاير بيكوز هي كيلد ان انسنت بيرسون بوت واي دي مردر He said because he too was so keen to kill his brother. But he happened to get killed first. So it is not permissible to raise arms against fellow Muslims. Whether on individual basis or forming groups. And if it is in the form of groups fighting over power, we have learned from Surah Al-Hujurat what to do. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Fatima from India. السلام عليكم يا فاطمة السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to ask you the letter فاطمة How are you? السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Go ahead فاطمة Can you hear me? Um, my, cousin. my cousin wants to ask a question. She's four years old. <laughs> MashaAllah. Go ahead. What is her name? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. I hear you very well. Go ahead. What is your question or your cousin's question? Okay. No problem. We can try again. So... The matter of who is shaheed and whom is not shaheed is determined by the Almighty Allah. But we know whenever Muslims are fighting against non-Muslims in a legit war, that those who die from among Muslims are perceived in the outer judgment as martyrs and shuhada. So we deal with them accordingly in a sense from a fiqh perspective. So we don't wash their bodies. We don't shroud them in a different coffin. We bury them in their own clothes. We don't even offer the funeral prayer for them. They are treated in the dunya matters, in the worldly ahkam, as I just mentioned. Then their fate is determined and decreed by Allah. Whether the person is a shaheed or not, whoever dies, there is nothing in Islam similar to other religions, which is the celebration of the anniversary of the death of whomever, including Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we do not commemorate the remembrance or celebrate the anniversary of the Shahada or the death of no one. May Allah guide us to what is best. We normally say, we hope he is a Shaheed. We hope she is a Shaheed and Allah knows best. Um, Sima Fatima is asking if a man has said to his wife Talaq first time and within the idda he consummated the marriage. Will this nullify the first Talaq? Let me explain a couple things. The word consummated the marriage means that this is the very first time that he has sexual relations with this woman. So it is upon processing a marriage contract. A person who divorces his wife after processing the marriage contract and before the consummation of the marriage, this divorce is called ba'in, which means it's irreversible, irrevocable. So even though it's a single talaq, and even though he loves this woman and she loves him and he wants to take her back, sorry, we have to process a new marriage contract and a new ijab and qabool, witnesses, dowry, everything from the scratch. But if you mean that somebody divorced his wife, they've already consummated the marriage, living together, he divorced her, and during the iddah, he had sexual relations with her, that means he had taken her back after the first or the second divorce. And it doesn't nullify the divorce though. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Sarah from Nigeria. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Could you please raise your voice a little bit? Alhamdulillah. I need you to raise your voice, please, Sarah. 
Okay, I'm Sarah from Nigeria. Okay. Actually, I have a question. Sure. My question is, I'm a doctor and I work in a private facility. Okay. Well, Dr. Sarah, I cannot hear you anymore. Are you? Okay, please, please try again, Dr. Sarah. I'm interested to learn your question. And we have Nadia from Canada. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Nadia. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh. Go ahead, Sister Nadia. So, um, my question, it was regarding um, uh, getting to know, like, um, a guy before marriage. So, I got a proposal. And um, in terms of family, there's no problem. Education, obviously, Islam in terms of Muslim, his deen and everything, akhlaq and everything's okay. But I was trying to do some research on my own end. And um, in terms of like social media and like I added him as a friend on Facebook and Instagram. And I noticed he follows um, a lot of people, but especially, especially, especially uh, girls online. And a lot of these people are like, uh, people that post inappropriate or, um, I guess, nude photos or whatever, etc. So I talked to him about this, and he said it's just for fun. It's nothing. He tried to uh, unfollow some of them, but he's still doing this. And um, so I don't know in terms of, like, is this going to be a problem in the future for us? Well, or, I, guess, um, I guess it will be a problem. You know, um, I can click like or share by accident once twice every now and then but if i deliberately choose mm -hmm. to follow websites which pose nude pictures that's a very negative sign and this is something you've confronted him with and he still insists so i i believe if i pray istikhara and i find out about this this is a sign when you say the guy is religious and everything what is the meaning of being religious or religiously committed he's following the deen right you know, mm -hmm. when somebody does this in private mm -hmm. or secretly, I didn't know about it. And the guy is hiding, concealing, may Allah accept his tawbah. But when he's doing this in public and it is known, so he's exposing himself, that is not acceptable, Sister Nadia. So in my case, I would advise my daughter to drop this proposal. May Allah, the Almighty, grant you a goodly spouse and a goodly offspring. Amen. Sometimes you know you might uh, think I'm a little harsh but it's not about being harsh it's about about being very well experienced in the field of marriage divorce and marriage counseling too many cases we handled so you could see what is coming you could foresee what is coming not because you know the unseen but because it happened thousands of times so why learn the hard way simply learn the easy way the Almighty Allah says in Surah Al-Talaq, okay, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ يُسْرًا Whoever keeps his duty to Allah, Allah will make his affairs easy, will make his way easy. So I know this guy has a very good profession. He's smart, he's handsome, belongs to a good family, but I figured that he's doing improper things. So in this case, I said no, because he said it's for fun, so he doesn't mind it. Allah the Almighty will send me a better spouse, no doubt. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Maryam from the USA. Maryam, assalamu alaikum, you're live on Ask Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Ya Sheikh. Could you please raise your voice? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Wada, yes, Sister yes, Maya. Yes. 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 How are you today? I'm doing wonderful. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. And you? Alhamdulillah. I just got up from work. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, actually it's 7 13 oh, a.m. You've, you've been working a night day. shift, right? Yes. Are you working yes. at the hospital? Yes. I figured. Okay. What is yeah. your question, Sister Maya? Yeah, uh, I have a question. I, I want to thank you first. I want to thank you for everything you're doing, your work and everything. Thank you. MashaAllah. May Allah reward you and Amen. your family. Thank Amen. you so much. Amen. I have, a, I have two questions. Yes. I, I have two questions. Yeah, Sheikh. Go ahead, please. The, 
Yeah, the first one is my family, where, where I come from. They all like following religious guides. They in Tarikha, Tijani Tarikha. Ah, yes, I'm familiar with that. Almost all of them. Are you guys from Sudan? My sister. Yes, they follow a Tarikha Tijani. Yes. Before I come here, I didn't know a lot of things. So I know if I was there, I would do the same thing. So for them, good Muslim is to follow like Sufis, like Tarikha Tijani. And when I came here because of you, you opened my eyes to help me a lot. And now, Allah since Allah. now, I'm, I, I, years I'm following like the Al Quran and Sunnah, and I'm doing really good. And my Great. kids, we're doing really good. We're far away from back home, and we're really good. We are in a no, no Muslim country, but we're doing good better than my country because they do, they go to do like witchcraft. Like uh, is the hard as they pay somebody to do for them. I mean, it, they do a lot of things. Okay. Kind of things. So, so I, I what is the question? Their eyes. Yeah, I try to open my family, but they are mad at me sometimes. And my husband, my my husband was doing the same things at Tariq, so we divorced. Mm. I'm I'm no longer married to him. The community here from my country, they all following like the Tariq Tijaniya. So I'm alone with my kids here in Washington and our mosque, we, we, we all like Ahlul Sunnah, we follow our Quran, but they all married. So, and one day my cousin told me, if a woman is not married, when he will die, we'll have problems. And when I ask the problem, is it permissible if I'm not married, what will happen to me? Like, it is permissible, I'm, I will be in trouble or you mean as a Muslim? You mean if you're not married at the time of death? Yeah, they said they said that. They told me if I'm not married at the time of death, something will happen. You mean and I will be not married? Okay, wait yeah, a minute. Allah. Because Mariam, you just um, a few seconds ago you've mentioned that your husband. So, you mean you're divorced now? Yes. Okay, People so you're divorced. Like the tariqa, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sister, divorced. sister yeah. Mariam, the issue of marriage. And divorce undergoes all the five ahkam. So let's talk about marriage. Sometimes it's compulsory. Sometimes it is recommended. Sometimes it may be just permissible. You do it or you don't do it. You're a choice. It could be dislike. It could be haram. So based on your situation, what if you're looking for a husband and you don't get married? It doesn't mean that you'll be in trouble with Allah or with the deen. No. You're looking and it just didn't happen. Allah will give you a husband in paradise, inshallah, when you make it safely to heaven. So this is not absolutely true. May the Almighty Allah guide all of us toward his best and keep us all steadfast on the straight path. Very proud of you, uh, Sister Maryam. May Allah bless you and your family. Assalamu alaikum. Amatullah from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. How are you doing? Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi Welcome to Ask the Amatullah. Thank you. I have two quick questions that are related to each other, if that's okay. Sure, no problem. Um, so we met a woman. We were helping her with something, and we met her, and we were talking normally. All of a sudden, the iqama for Maghrib came, and she started to say things to us that she should not have known about us. Like, she's saying, oh, you're like this and this and this. And then she started to tell us, okay, this next year this will happen and this will happen. And she was saying, um, she's, she's very religious and she prays and she said, I'm very close to God and I'm very spiritual, very close to Allah. And sometimes Allah will reveal things in my heart. And that's how I um, know these things and I can tell you what's going to happen next year. And then she told us before sleeping, you should read Surah Al-Fatiha seven times and Mu'adzitain three times and then Fatiha three more times. Um, so my two questions are, one, is it possible that you can be so religious in Islam and close to God that God can reveal the future and things to you like this? And my second question is, is there such a thing where we read certain surahs a specific number of times for certain benefits before sleeping? Sister Amatullah, uh, would you trust my answer? Yes. Okay. Unfriend this woman. Okay. Period. Okay. Unfriend this woman. Any person, any person who would say, well, God tells me what was going to happen in the future is a plain liar. Okay. Number one, last verse of Surah Luqman, 
In which the Almighty Allah says, In Allah Indahu ilmu sa'ati wa yunazilu al-ghaytha wa ya'lamu ma fi al-arham. Wa ma tadri nafsum ma dha taksibu ghadan wa ma tadri nafsum bi ayy ardin tamut. In Allah alimun khabir. In this ayah, 34, last verse, chapter number 31, Surah Luqman, the Almighty Allah said he preserved the knowledge of the unseen to himself, including مَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَادَ تَكْسِبُ غَدَى No soul knows what is going to happen in the morrow. وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتُ And no soul knows where will it expire. Allah indeed is all-knowing, well-acquainted. So, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself wouldn't know what is going to happen in the future except through Wahi. And guess what? Wahi has been seized by the death and the demise of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There could be some sort of inspiration, expectations, but when somebody comes forward and say, I'm so religious, and because of that God reveals to me what is going to happen in the future, I can assure you that this person is dealing with the jinn and this person is not religious whatsoever. That's a plain lie because this is what the Quran says. No one whatsoever knows what is going to happen, not the following year, but the morrow, even a few minutes to come from now. It is totally ghaib for us. إن الله عنده علم الساعة وينزل الغيث ويعلم ما في الأرحام وما تدري نفس ماذا تكسب غدا وما تدري نفس بأي أرض تموت. I will answer your second question after these calls. السلام عليكم. أريج from the KSA. السلام عليكم. I think we have a problem with the sound. Can we raise the sound in the speaker in the studio? Assalamu alaikum, Arish. Go ahead. Alaikum assalam. I have one question. Yes, please. I have I have a small brother of seven years old. Okay. He, he is very scared now. Um, since two weeks, he's very scared. Wherever he goes, he wants someone to come with him, and uh, he he does not he keeps following my mom. And uh, even if there is some so sound, he gets very scared. And uh, if my mom. You know, she uh, she has to keep the door open, the door, uh, the washroom door open, uh, because he he keeps getting very scared. And so did, what can we do did, to Arish, did you ever ask him if you have seen anything to frighten him, or even a dream, or what happened? Why I did it happen all of a sudden? No. Okay. So basically, for a reason or another or an unknown reason, I would recite the ruqya. On daily basis on this child I would recite the ruqya on daily basis and the first few days I would lie down in bed with him and I would assure him we're around you then to follow the gradual withdrawal technique by comforting him assuring him that he's very powerful he's very strong uh, he can be by himself uh, raising his self-esteem and inshallah in a matter of uh, between one week to two he will overcome this fear and uh, he will become even better than before. So Ruqya, and raising his self-esteem, but in the beginning you need to assure him, comfort him by being next to him as much as you can. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Aisha from Canada. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Aisha. Welcome to Askoda. Thank you. Alaikum salam. Uh, I had uh, three questions. Um, yes. So uh, my first question is, um, uh, at work, uh, we don't have a uh, private space to pray. So um, we either have lunchroom or a corner in the office. Um, so there are a lot of men around uh, when I pray, or uh, um, there is actually a loud music always playing. Um, so I wanted to know whether my prayers are valid if I'm praying in front of, uh, you know, uh, men. 
um, we, I only get three, 30 minutes um, break, so it doesn't give me enough time to go outside and find a quiet place. So that's why I have to stay in the workplace. And uh, my second question is, um, I hear from a friend that uh, if I have Udu and if a man passes by uh, me and by accident he gets in contact with me, um, my Udu will break. So I want to know if this is true. And uh, what do you mean my third question what, what, what is... What kind so of contact, Aisha, please? I'm sorry? You said if a man passes by me and have some kind of contact. What kind of contact? Like, I don't know, by accident he, um, like, because uh, the space is tight and he just passes by and touches my hand or something, my shoulder, like taps, you know. Okay. Um, Go something like that, yeah. Thank you. And the third question is, um, so three, um, like for almost three months, there was a lockdown in Canada, of course, because of uh, COVID. And uh, so the government was paying people uh, who worked um, from home, but they made uh, less than a thousand. Um, for So my, uh, I, I fall under that category, so they were paying me but the payment somehow got delayed. So I'm getting the payments basically, I'm receiving it probably next week. So I wanna know if this uh, money is halal for me to receive or should I just give it for Sadaka? Okay, got three of your questions. Do you have any questions? Any more? Thank you so much. You're most welcome. No, thank you so much, uh, have a good one. Sister Aisha, it is okay to pray in the lounge and do your best to keep a sutra right in front of you. So in the one of the corners of the room and keep a sutra like a chair. You put a chair before you and this is very feasible and offer your prayer. May Allah keep you strong and steadfast on his straight path. Increase the level of your Iman. Amen. If a man is passing in the corridor and he happen to have this physical contact uh, accidentally, it does not nullify your wudu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you always pure. Um, uh, what was the uh, third question? Okay, I guess I will answer it after the break, inshallah, because I was told uh, it's over time to have break. We'll be back, inshallah, in a couple minutes, my dear viewers. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. A quick reminder of our phone numbers and the contact information. They should appear on the bottom of your screen for the reminder. And we have some callers, Sister Zinat from the USA. Welcome to Ask Oda. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Muhammad. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, please. How, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing fine. And you? Alhamdulillah, we are doing fine. Great. Okay. One question for today. Uh, my question is, if your loved one die, and like, like on the after one year or whatever, some of your sibling want to do like fatia and making food and inviting some imam, local imam for eating at home and fatia. And if you don't believe, like if I don't believe in it, your sibling upset, what is, uh, how to do the fatia for your parents? What is a good way to do it? Thank you, Sister Zinat from the USA. I will be more than happy to answer you, inshallah. Our most beloved was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and is still Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then all his companions. So during the life of the Prophet ﷺ, how many deaths have taken place? Hundreds? Thousands? Do you guys find in any narration that the Prophet ﷺ, whenever any of his daughters died, whether Ruqayya or Umm Kulthum or Ibrahim or Al-Qasim or Abdullah, those are his children who died during his life. Did he ever do any of that? Nope. Never. 
when when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam died, their companions loved them most. Did Abu Bakr or Umar or Uthman or Fatima and Ali gather people to read Quran for him through celebrations or festivals or commemorations every year or every after three days or after forty days? Nope, 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 nope. Then any act, any practice in this regard. Even if we're getting together to recite Quran and give everyone power and say we did a khatma or recite Surah Al-Fatiha a certain number of times and say we grant its reward, this is all categorized as not a sunnah. And what is not a sunnah is an innovation. Follow and do not innovate. But I love my parents so much and I want to benefit them. I know how to benefit them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, that a man will see his ranks being elevated in paradise. He's in the grave or she's in the grave and you see that they have been promoted. Oh Allah, what for? I haven't done any good. I'm sitting here for years. Allah the Almighty will say, Because your child has been praying for you. So we know that the dua 100% will benefit the dead. Next, a woman asked the Prophet وسلم, Can I perform Hajj? On behalf of my late father, yes. A man asked, my mother uh, died and she owed some fasting. Can I make it? He said, yes, you should. So fasting on behalf of a dead person to make up their missed fasting, yes. Performing hajj, whether the farida or even voluntary for a late person or umrah, that is permissible. Giving any charity and donating the thawab, the reward to the late person, all of that is permissible. And it is recommended. So why do we neglect all of that and we stick to some cultural traditions which have nothing to do with Islam? That would lead me to tackle Sister Amatullah's question about the person who said that she's very religious and she knows the future Allah reveals to her. And I said that's a plain lie. And she prescribes for them to recite Surah Al-Fatiha seven times before going to sleep and certain number of surahs uh, and certain surahs certain number of times. And this is a plain and a clear proof that this personality is forging what she's doing and is not religious whatsoever. <gasps> Shaykh, but she's reciting Quran. I know the shaitan does not mislead the religious people by telling them to abandon Islam or to become atheist by changing, by altering, by modifying, by innovating. And the messenger of Allah said, follow and do not innovate. Do you know that even though Surah Al-Fatiha is literally the greatest chapter of the entire Quran, but it is not among the remembrance of Allah before going to sleep, not even once? Do you know that the Prophet ﷺ recommended and prescribed certain remembrance and certain ayat to be recited and chapters to be recited in certain number of times before going to sleep? Why in the world you neglect all of that and you're possessed? are obsessed with some you know prescription made by some people I ask you I'm not gonna say I challenge you because I don't like to do that I'm just asking you kindly could you please present me a proof where the messenger of Allah said before going to sleep recite Surah Al-Fatiha seven times just simple question if you fail, then please stop prescribing for me things which are not Islamic. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Alice from Libya. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Long time, Sister Alice. Welcome to the program. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. I have a few questions, but my first question uh, is around Surah Al Baqarah. I want to reap the benefits of reading Surah Al-Baqarah every day, but uh, I, I can't, sometimes I can't finish it completely in the same day, you know, it takes me two hours to do so. So uh, I was, and there are places where I've seen the, they prescribe that if you want to reap even more benefits, you should read it three days in a row or 40 days in a row every day. Okay. So uh, I was thinking, I was asking I can I can I um, can I divide the surah and not in, not complete can I divide it like in two times okay 
I got and you. And also, uh, I have, okay, can I, ha I have another question about Surat al-Baqarah. No problem. Yes. Go ahead. Um, when, when we when we play it like on a CD for the house, uh, we should leave the windows open or something like that. What about the removing the fly screen? Uh, I was thinking maybe that should be removed or not, or what's the ruling on that? I mean, and why do we have to leave the windows open? I don't know. That's what they've been saying, that when you recite, uh, not recite, when you play the Surah al-Baqarah or the Quran in the house, you leave windows open, uh, like, I mean, on each side of the house. Every day, every day I learn a lot of new things, which I did not learn in books. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> it's, well, it's on the, uh, anyway. Um, so, uh, what about if I stop between reading the Surah Al-Baqarah? Uh, can I stop and like have a drink or something? Because I okay, I got your question, uh, okay. Sister Alice from uh, Libya. Well, uh, the Sound Hadith says that whoever recites Surah Al-Baqarah at home, that Satan's all of them will not come near his house nor will enter his house or her house for three days in a row. Perfect. So what if I can recite it all in one sitting? It's okay. I can take a break. I can drink. I can go make wudu. I can offer my prayer and come back. Okay. I can take my medication and come back. Normally, Surah Al-Baqarah will take an hour and 20 minutes. An average reader will take so an hour and a half or two hours like in your case. No problem. A person who find it extremely difficult, go ahead and listen. And there's a difference between hearing and listening. So if I'm playing the Baqara in the background, Alhamdulillah, this is good. But that's not called Sama' or Istima'. Istima' when I sit and I follow up, I'm listening to the reciter. So I get the same or word like reciting it exactly. Okay? And Istima' listening attentively to the Quran gives you the same reward like its recitation and it's a great act of worship as well and uh, leave the windows closed or open them the curtain I, I personally do not have any reference in this respect Wallahu ta'ala a'la wa a'lam Assalamu alaikum Sarah from Nigeria I believe this is Dr. Sarah is back Assalamu alaikum Go ahead, Dr. Sara. Please, my question is, um, I work in a private facility. Hello? Yes, I'm listening. Okay. Then I do get this question. For example, when a lady, she has just delivered. And after a few months, she'll come back, she'll ask me, she's having like um she's like bleeding mm. so she don't know whether if that blood is from the um nefas or from the hyla so in islam how are you going to differentiate Got like your the days sure that of the, the nefas and that mm. of the hyla how are you going to differentiate it and when are you going to say now the patient is is experiencing her own hyla not nefas so I want to know the Islamic ruling apart from the apart from the medical ruling. Thank you. No, as a matter of fact, I would love for every Muslim gynecologist to learn that, because normally a woman would trust the gynecologist or the obstetrician more than anybody else will feel comfortable. But unfortunately, most of the uh, you know doctors, the gynecologists, and the obstetricians. They do not know the ahkam, while it is very necessary for them. And nifas is the postpartum or delivery bleeding. There is no minimum for it, Sister Sarah. Unlike what some people think, it must be for 40 days. No. Uh, if you are a gynecologist, you know that. Um, it's very possible. A couple days after the delivery, especially um, if it was done like a C-section or whatever, that the woman may cease bleeding, the bleeding will be ceased. In this case, the fast, the post-delivery bleeding is over. And now you may go and you're obliged to pray on time. I know you can pray standing, go ahead and pray while sitting, but I'm talking about now you are in a state of tahara. 
oh, I don't have to wait for 40 days. No, 40 days is a figure where most of the scholars have considered as the maximum period of bleeding after delivery. So even if there is a, a bleeding afterward, it will be perceived as some irregular bleeding due to sickness or istihada. So you will have to make wudu with every salah, uh, before every salah and so on. If the woman, if the bleeding after uh, the delivery has been seized after three days, five days, 10 days, 25 days or 40 days, خلاص, alhamdulillah, a woman is in a state of tahar. Every woman keeps in mind that on which date normally she experiences her period, her monthly period. So if it starts on the same time you know, of what she used to have before the pregnancy, then automatically you would treat this as the monthly period. Again, no prayers, no fasting, no sexual relations, no tawaf. She used to have it for seven days, eight days, alhamdulillah, whether this time or less, and the bleeding has been seized, and there is a clear discharge afterward, may go and start offering the prayer. So the message I wanted to deliver, that there is no minimum time for the post-delivery bleeding. It could end at any time, even if it is just a day or a few days. And the maximum should be 40 days. Afterward, it will be treated as an irregular bleeding or istahada. If uh, the bleeding has ceased, then immediately afterward or a couple days later, she started a new bleeding during her regular period or monthly menses, then she will treat this as a hide. Again, she would stop praying and fasting until this is over, make ghusl, and then resume praying and make up the missed fasting. Wallahu ta'ala um, All right. So, uh, we just have a couple minutes. I won't be able to take any more calls, but I have a very serious message to share with you. You have all have seen what is happening in Sudan. And whenever there was a big blast in Lebanon, we talked about it, and Alhamdulillah, we raised enough fund, and it reached the Lebanese people, and it assisted them. May the Almighty Allah reward all of you for helping and assisting those who are in need. 650,000 homes in Sudan have been destroyed. Hundreds of thousands of people are homeless, and hundreds of people have died already. There is a chaos in Sudan. Sudan is a Muslim country. So our zakah is due to be paid now to Sudan. We can pay it in advance. Help the Sudanese people by number one, praying for them in your sujood, and after the Dhu'ud Sharif and before making tasdeeb, in your tahajjud, in qunut, in the prayer, and in the utter prayer. This is number one, and that is the most important kind of help. Secondly, if you have any surplus, or even if you can share by taking a piece of your bite and supporting our brothers and sisters in Sudan, this is our duty. The Prophet said, كان الله في عون العبد ما دام العبد في عون أخي. The Almighty Allah will continue to support the servant of Allah as long as he's supporting his brothers and sisters. Yesterday during the break, I looked at uh, the news and I saw the disasters. So I immediately picked up the phone, I contacted uh, the organization whom we trust in the UK, the Human Appeal, who are also affiliated with the United Nations. And we know that they deliver the help to those who are in need for the immediate help. And they have an access to do that really on the ground. So we posted their website and the page, please support your Sudanese brothers as much as you can. Do not say, you know, what would 10 bucks do? Or 20 bucks, even if it is just five bucks, do it. Train yourself and make your child, type the pen number, put the card number and contribute. Train them while bringing them to be given, to be assisting and helping in order to experience Allah's help, mercy, and blessings. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسديما كثيرا 
والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله is my